I often get asked what are the basic tools that a bassoonist needs to just get into reed making or reed adjusting? What are sort of the bare necessities to have on hand for what you need to do? If you don't already know, there are a lot of specific sort of niche tools and supplies that are really only associated with reed making. And I know it can be really overwhelming to figure out not only what you need, but what variations of what types of tools you need, because even when it comes to things like knives or mandrels, there's all different types. And so it's hard to know as a beginner starting out what you should get. So in this video, I'm going to go over what I think are the absolute necessities of a basic reed adjusting beginning reed making kit to have. And I'm going to link down to where you can buy those tools if you need to purchase them yourself. If you haven't already, I recommend you check out some of the other reed making videos I made on this channel. Many of you ask me to go in more in depth on reed making topics. And so I made a number of topics on specific reed issues. For example, what to do when your E is sagging or how to make your reed less resistant or how to break in your reed and all these different sort of topics, but I haven't gone in specifically into detail on tools that you need. So that's the purpose of this video. If this is the first time we're meeting, my name is Dr. Natalie Law and I'm a professional bassoonist and bassoon teacher. And I love to help people just like you learn how to play the bassoon and improve your skills and feel confident playing this instrument. So the very first tool that I recommend most bassoonists get when they are just wanting to get into some reed making, reed adjusting, um, is a pair of pliers. And these are a pair of smaller pliers, um, I'd say below five inches or so in length. And um, the particular pliers that I have are, are specifically reed making pliers. Most sets of pliers that you might just have already around at your house, they have the jaws of the plier at the top. That's kind of the standard thing. A lot of them have a wire cutter um, in the pliers and that's really helpful for bassoon reed making because you need to be able to cut wires if you have to replace a wire. And what's sort of different about a sort of reed making specific pair of pliers is it has this additional sort of forming area in in the pliers um, where you could actually use that when you're forming the reed, if you're making your own reeds to um, form it into place. And to be honest with you, I don't use this part of my pliers very often. I'll use it on occasion, but I'm mostly just using the jaws of the plier and of course the wire cutter part. So honestly, just a regular pair of pliers is fine, but if you want to kind of take the next step up and get, you know, a reed making pair of pliers, that would be um, another option as well. But a pair of pliers is kind of like, if there was one tool to have as a bassoonist on hand, it's a pair of pliers. When it comes to reed adjusting, pliers are used to either squeeze from side to side or top to bottom on the first and second wires on your reed, the, the wires that are typically exposed on a bassoon reed. Um, and that can change the resistance and sort of the tone of the reed as well. And so pliers can make a lot of difference. And one thing that I always say to students who are just getting into reed adjusting and maybe feeling a little bit apprehensive about making adjustments on their reeds is that the nice thing about pliers is that anything that you do with pliers, you can usually undo. So for example, if you squeeze too tightly top to bottom on your wire, you just squeeze side to side to open the reed back up and you it's like you didn't make the first adjustment to begin with it's unlike a knife or sandpaper or files or anything else where you're actually taking cane off the reed and you can't put that back on pliers are a really great way to just dip your toes into reed making and make some really basic wire adjustments the next tool or supply that I recommend most students start getting early on is um, some sandpaper, usually 220 or 400 grit. The higher the number of sandpaper, the more fine it is. And so the less cane it will take off, 
Consequently, the lower the number of the sandpaper, the more coarse it is, and it will be more aggressive on the reed. So that's kind of the difference in the different numbers. And you can just buy regular sandpaper at almost any store, really, any hardware store or whatever. Um, and you might even have some at home and it's pretty cheap to come by. So it's a good thing to have on hand um, because sandpaper is sort of the first step into making some very small adjustments on the blade of the reed. You can make adjustments on the tip of the reed. I will sometimes use a sandpaper on other parts of the reed if I feel like I wanna blend a couple areas and just need a little bit of sandpaper to blend some things um, and that will help with resistance. And so I feel like sandpaper is kind of a must have. Um, so you can get a lot done with a pair of pliers and sandpaper and you might already have those at home or if you don't, they're very cheap to get and you can do a lot with those. The next tool to add to your arsenal is a mandrel. And what a mandrel does is it just supports the reed, um, the inside the tube of the reed so that when you're making adjustments to it, it's less likely to crack and it's, you know, it's more stable. Um, and so it's a way to support the reed, especially if you're making, if you're tightening the wire on the reed um, and you're gonna be actually pulling on the, the wire and, and pulling on the tube, the mandrel is what's gonna keep the reed from collapsing and cracking and something bad happening that you don't intend. Um, so mandrels are also fairly cheap. You usually have to order them online. They're not something you can just get at your local hardware store usually, um, but and that's where I put a link down below and you can purchase one that way. There are different types of mandrels. Typically there are holding mandrels and there are forming mandrels. And you also wanna be careful that when you buy mandrels that you get bassoon mandrels and not oboe or English horn or uh, any other type of mandrel. You wanna make sure that they say bassoon on them because there's different sizes of mandrels as well. Obviously bassoon reeds are a little bit bigger so we need a, something more supportive. Same thing if you are needing to make adjustments on a contra bassoon reed, you would need a contra bassoon mandrel which is the biggest mandrel on the double reed family um, because it's the biggest reed. I would recommend just getting uh, what might be called just a holding mandrel um, as opposed to what's called a forming mandrel. A forming mandrel does essentially the same thing but it's usually longer and it supports more into the blade of the reed um, and it's really more for when you're forming the cane um, when you're making your own reeds but if you're just making some basic adjustments to your reeds you're not making your own reeds from scratch um, the holding mandrel is really what you want. You don't need the full long forming mandrel, although it doesn't necessarily hurt anything to use a forming mandrel. Um, I would just recommend a, a holding mandrel or just shorter mandrel to start with. And the next tool that I think is important to have for most bassoonists is what's called a plaque. And what this does is it goes inside the reed and it supports the blade when you're making adjustments to it. Kind of a similar idea to the mandrel, the plaque supports the blades of the reed so that you aren't cracking it when you're making any sort of adjustments to it. So plaques are also very inexpensive and pretty easy to order online. Um, I'll link down to where you can find them. And again, make sure there's different sizes of plaques. There's lots of different types of plaques. Um, I like these black plastic ones. I don't like metal plaques as much because I think they wear down the knife more quickly than plastic does. And I just like the feel of the plastic ones more than the metal. This is another tool where you wanna make sure that you get a bassoon plaque and not an oboe plaque, because again, there's different sizes. Another good basic tool to have are some razors. Um, razors are really nice because they're super sharp and you can make really sort of precise adjustments with them, um, primarily for the average person. Uh, I would say that having razors would be a good option um, for if you need to cut the tips of your reeds. If you get a reed that's too long, for example, and you need to just cut a sliver off the tip, uh, the razor is a good way to do that. And you would want a cutting block of some kind underneath the reed to support you cutting off the tip. Um, but razors, I use razors for scoring the cane. I use razors uh, just as a quick way to cut thread. Um, I use them for a variety of, of reasons, but they're kind of a nice thing to have on hand. But razors are a good 
kind of basic tool to have around. You can get them at your local hardware store. They're pretty cheap and they are kind of universal tools to have on hand. Another basic reed adjusting, reed making tool to have is some type of knife. And you want to make sure that you get a knife that's specific to reed making. There's all sorts of different types of knives out there. Generally, you don't want to use like a pocket knife or something like that. You want to use something that's kind of made for reed making. My favorite type of knife is a Landwell double hollow ground knife um, or just double hollow ground knives in general. Um, they tend to be pretty expensive. I also frequently use this knife, which is a ceramic knife, um, because the amount of reed making that I do, especially selling reeds, um, I like that I don't have to sharpen my knife uh, because it's ceramic. With other knives, you have to um, sharpen them periodically. Now, the, the knife is kind of a an optional tool if you are more of a beginner. Holding the knife and learning how to make adjustments with the knife takes a lot of time and practice. And if you're not comfortable with that already, it might be a little overwhelming. And especially if you don't have a teacher that you're working with to kind of show you or guide you through that process. Um, so if you aren't working with a teacher and the knife seems kind of overwhelming, you maybe don't necessarily need a knife and you can kind of do similar type of adjustments with sandpaper and then also with files, which I'm gonna get into here in a second. Good knives are pretty generally pretty expensive. There's again a lot of different knives out there. People have different preferences for what type of knife to use. Every single teacher that I've had has used a vastly different knife. This would be another item to have in your toolbox of reed tools. The next tool or set of tools would be a set of files, and these are um, diamond files, and they're usually smaller. Um, than kind of your typical files that you see at the hardware store. Um, usually these are kind of seen with um, like jewelry making or, you know, really sort of fine crafting is kind of where you would see these files commonly. Um, but you definitely want the smaller kind of more refined files. Most file sets come in a set of four. Um, there is kind of your standard file that you're, you would be used to that's just flat and square, um, that would be your go-to. Um, there's other types of files that can be nice for reed making. There's sort of a half rounded file, it has kind of a rounded edge on it. And that can be nice because that rounded edge allows you to get on a smaller surface area if you're trying to do something really specific, um, but you don't wanna be super aggressive about it. That's a nice way, that's a nice use for the sort of like half rounded files and most of them have sort of a pointed tip on them. So they can also get very um, specific and if there's a very specific area of the reed that you want to adjust. Another file along those lines um, is one where it's sort of a triangle shaped and there's three um, sides to that triangle and this is also nice because it's like having the regular file that we're used to, um, but very small surface area, again, and flat surface area. So this is a nice one to have as well if you need to get in a really specific area, but you don't wanna take off cane on a big portion of the reed. Another file that I commonly use uh, is a rat, so what you might call a rat tail file, um, and it's a rounded file, there's no, flat edges on it. And actually frequently what I will use the rat tail file for um, is is if I feel like there's like a piece of loose cane or it's not fully smooth on the inside of my tube, I will actually insert the um, file inside the tube of the reed and roll it back and forth. And then that rolls the file over the whole inside of the tube. That helps to sort of clean up the inside of the tube without taking off a lot of cane. So if it, if you're looking in, in your reed and you see that there's like a piece of cane that's kind of um, sticking out and that's interfering with the airstream, a rat tail file is a good way to kind of deal with that. So just having a basic set of files on hand, again, that's you can usually find those at a hardware store um, or you can order them online, again, there's a link down in the description. Another tool that I think is helpful to have is what's called a reamer. And a reamer is something that you would insert inside the, the tube of the reed and then you twist it. 
um, and it takes off cane on the inside of the reed. It reams the, the inside of the tube and it removes cane so that it'll fit on your bocal better. The reamer is kind of a one trick pony. That's the only thing that it does. But when your reed doesn't quite fit on the bocal for whatever reason, it's really frustrating. And the only way to really fix it is to ream the inside. So if you're buying reeds and one or more of those reeds don't, they kind of, it kind of wants to wiggle on and off the bocal. It doesn't want to stay on. The reamer is a way to fix that and deal with it. So it's good to have on hand, especially if you're not making your own reeds and don't have control of how big the reeds are being formed. That's a good way to deal with it. The one that I have had and used for years is the Rieger reamer, which is very expensive. I think I think it's around a hundred or more dollars. You can get cheaper ones, um, but they may not cut as evenly if the spirals on the reamer aren't as evenly distributed. So just kind of keep that in mind that you can get a cheaper reamer, especially if it's just something that you're just gonna have on hand if you really need it. Just know that nicer reamers are gonna be able to take off cane more evenly and effectively than like a cheap, cheaper reamer would. Just as most tools, the cheaper end is not going to do the job as well as a higher end. So just kind of think about what level of investment and in reamer that you'd want to make if you're going to make one. Another set of tools that are good to have are screwdrivers. And these aren't really reed tools. You don't use screwdrivers with reeds. And if you're anything like me, you have a tool bag that you take everywhere with you that has your tools and your reeds in it. I always keep these screwdrivers in my tool bag um, because there's always a pesky screw that will come out on your bassoon and you need like a specific screwdriver to deal with it. Um, and for me on my bassoon, I only need two screwdrivers and that fits every single screw on my bassoon. You usually want one that's small. That's like a, um, like a jeweler's uh, screwdriver. These sometimes will come in sets. I find just having the one is fine. And then for me, I also need a bigger one um, that fits my bigger screws that the smaller screwdriver wouldn't be able to turn. So I just always have these on hand and it's a good idea because sometimes if you're at a concert and a screw comes loose and you have no way to fix it, um, the screwdriver really comes in handy. I have a couple more sort of bonus items that aren't really tools, but supplies that are good to have on hand, even if you're not making your own read, but having these supplies on hand can be helpful. So the first one is wire. Um, I use 22 gauge brass wire. This is kind of a standard type of wire to use with reeds. And obviously you need wire if you're making your own reeds, but even if you don't make your own reeds, but you make some adjustments to your reeds, it's good to have this wire on hand because if a wire, if you're adjusting a wire and it snaps, then you need something to replace it with and you put a new wire on your reed. Or if you're playing on an older reed and you feel like the wire on that reed is really worn out um, and is about to snap possibly, you might just proactively replace that wire. It's just good to kind of have it on hand as neat on an as needed basis, even if you aren't making your own reeds. And in the same vein as having wire on hand for your reeds. It's a good idea to have some additional thread on hand that you would use specifically for reeds. And for the same reason, if your thread falls apart and falls off your reed and you need to replace it, you a lot of times that'll happen, especially on older reeds. And having thread on hand is kind of a must have. And thread is really easy to find. I use cotton thread, so it's just the kind that you could pick up at any store, Joann's or wherever. A lot of people use nylon thread uh, and there are a lot of double reed retailers that sell nylon thread for reed making and you can pick all sorts of different colors. So if you need to do an emergency rewrap of the reed, you have thread on hand that you can do that with. So it's a good idea to have those kind of supplies around. I don't carry my wire and thread around with me every day wear like I do with all of the other tools that I mentioned um, because I typically am just using them when I'm making reads but I have them out and readily available for when I'm making reads and when I might need to repair a read. If this video was helpful for you, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel below and let me know down in the comments what types of tools do you think
think all bassoonists should have on hand? Are there any special tools that you carry around that you feel like you really need? Are there special certain variations of tools that you like over others? I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you do with your basic reed tools. 